Ooh. So we'll see how this goes. If still having tech issues with people, um, I'll do a pre-recorded video and post it later today. But let's see if anybody comes back and tells me how things are. So I'll hang out twiddling my thumbs, maybe talking about something. Um, not sure what. Uh, already talked about the t-shirt, already talked about the studio. Um, we're talking about the recycling boxes that I have to break down and tie up later today. That would be exciting. I'm not going to show you them because, you know, you really don't want to see the rest of what is surrounding me here. Um, so. Okay, Rich says it's Facebook issues. So... Gee, issues with Facebook? That has never happened before. Um, I think I'm going to muscle through. I, at least I know somebody can hear and see me again. So we'll see what happens again. So take two. Um, probably keep the other one up. Um, so anyway, you know, we talked about things in the beginning of the first one. The status of the library, which I really didn't know. The status of New York State Forward. Uh, my wonderful World Tai Chi Day t-shirt. What I didn't finish about this is, this is actually two years of t-shirts. Because this was originally issued in 2015 for World Tai Chi Day. And then for an unknown reason, because I didn't ask, he didn't share. Um, it was reissued for the 2018 uh, t-shirt. So uh, we'll just get, go in with our warm-up and hope things hold out, shake things out. So we're starting with some Tai Chi Shigong. It's, well, of course, since it's Tai Chi Shigong, it's intimately related to uh, what we did last week. Last week we did Lion Rotates the Ball. Uh, this week we're going to do Left and Right Opens the Mountain. So see what Colette has to say. Uh, I need to get my glasses on. We're back for now. Okay, cool. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, this has a combination of an undulation and a twist. So you might be familiar if you've been here before. Um, and really, we've done a lot of different exercises that has this kind of undulation. What we're going to add to this, and I want you to notice what my hands are doing as I'm doing this, right? That they're rolling backwards when I roll backwards, and because of the arc in the back, they're rolling forward when I roll forward. I don't have to make that happen. But we're also going to add a twist. So notice if I'm twisting from one side, it creates a wave, a greater wave, and if I'm twisting from the other side, it creates a greater wave in that. Now we want to have both the undulation and the twist. We don't want to um, forsake the twist for the undulation or the undulation for the twist. Throughout this exercise, we have our delicate lady hands, our beautiful lady hands. So even though it's left and right to open mountains, we're not doing a spear hand thing with this. And it follows the pattern of our movement that we use with both hands in an undulation exercise known as large bear swimming in water. Right? Where we do have sort of a little spear hand in moving forward, but we don't have it here. So what that looks like is one hand. Now, when the arm is, I don't want to say this, but when it's waiting its turn, it still should move and be fluid with the body. It's not locked in place waiting for its turn to move forward. So the undulation in the twist drives one hand out and then back. Shoulder impingement, you may be a little bit lower, right, as you come back. No shoulder impingement, you're going to be a little bit higher. So you have both the unfoiling, uh, unrolling of the undulation and the unrolling of the twist. Pulling back, it comes in, and the other one goes out and it comes in. 
And that's the pattern. <clears throat> A little Facebook caught in my throat there, I think. We're going to do this. I don't know, six pairs sounds like good, especially since we're uh, um, are a little behind our schedule here. Uh, and then, you know, if you missed it before or you couldn't hear me before um, or you joined the, the second session and haven't seen the first session, we're going to spend post warm up exploring three different ways of moving from the third brush knee in the 24 posture form in young style and ours is medium frame young style. Um, into playing the pipa, playing the pipa, playing the guitar, playing the lute. So, a little shake. We're going to breathe into this. We're just going to take, we're, we won't float the hands in the downward palm position when we breathe into it. We'll float them into a position where they're sort of both sides of the shia dancy and acupuncture point, palms up, fingertips angled toward the center. And by the way, when we extend, it is toward the center. It's not right on the right and left on the left. Let the arms dangle. <clears throat> a couple of cleansing breaths. Find an exhalation. Inhale, drawing both hands up. And then an exhalation as you undulate and twist the first hand up, out, and to the center, palm up. Ideally, an inhalation, pulling back, but breathe when you have to. It is Tai Chi Qigong, so you want the breath and the movement. And the movement in the breath. So in other words, the breath is generating movement as much as the movement is generating the breath. Two and two. I really like the, this kind of combination in Tai Chi Qigong, the stationary family, because it really gets the whole body doing different stuff. Threading the chi through the body, but also working the body movement and connection three-dimensionally. I believe that was four and four. Talking and counting, if you know me, ain't my strong suit. Sorry, Ms. Lawson, for the eight. If you're new to Water Tiger School, and new to Lawrence McElroy, you don't know. Ms. Lawson was my high school English teacher. I know I've gone over six, but I feel like continuing here. A couple more pairs. So four more, including that one. Three more, including this one. Two more, including this one. And one more. Probably an exhalation or an inhalation doesn't really, well, whatever works for you. Turn the palms down. Let them float. And close. Going to put the vertical line and crown point head base of the pelvic bowl over the ball of the right foot. Hands up, out, away from the body. Hands in. Ooh, I hope you do this better than I just did. Foot in, hands down, heels down. And all over. So there you go, a little left and right to open the mountain from the stationary family of Tai Chi Qigong. Um, I can't remember right now if it's the primary or the coiling set. Um, a lot of times when I think I'm making an intelligent guess, I guess, you know, because of all the twisting and stuff that it's coiling and it ends up being primary. So I'm not even gonna guess without actually remembering. So as I said, you know, diversity, I think, is very important to everything that we do, especially when we're at World Tai Chi Day. Um, we talk about that a lot. 
Because, you know, we might have eight or nine or 10 or 12 facilitators from the same number of programs or, you know, some will send double, you know, have double people. So might have like 12 facilitators from 10 different programs, something like that. And during the group demonstration uh, that we have, the facilitators demonstration, uh, you might have two or three different people doing something like the 24 posture form, the short form. Or they'll, they'll be doing the long, the, the, what is supposed to be the same long form. And there are times that it looks like, hey, they're, they're doing absolutely positively the same thing in the same way. And other times it's like, what? Huh? He's going south, they're going east. What's going on? Uh, and I, I think that's strong, a strong aspect of Tai Chi is its diversity. It gives us an opportunity to explore you know, the way that they do things compared to the way that we do things and either strengthens your own opinion that what you are doing is right for you, right for you, doesn't necessarily mean what, there is, what they are doing is wrong. It's just not right for you. Um, you know, if the principles are maintained as your lineage defines them, is something that we need to consider. Uh, and sometimes, as you explore the way they're doing something as opposed to the way that you're doing something, you're like, hey, you know, that moment's never really felt, felt right to me. I think maybe they're onto something there. I mean, I've made a lot of different changes in the way that I do things from that experience. Some of them are very minute, some of them are quite large. Um, but anyway, so what we want to do today, as I mentioned, is three different ways of getting from posture known as brush knee, step and strike, to a posture that we call playing the pipa. Now, some people pronounce it pipa. Other people just say play the guitar, play the lute. Right? So there can be a whole sequence of movements. The Water Tiger School way of doing this is, I don't want to say complicated, but there's a lot of movement between the third brush knee into pay paw. What we need to know is one, our four stance. We'll start with brush knee step and strike or brush knee twist step in some people's lineages or brush knee strike. It's all sorts of different names. So we're shoulder wide based on where our heels are and our shoulder width, our basic shoulder width is determined by where the drop of the shoulder is. So the drop of the shoulder splits the heel on one side in half and the same on the other side. And for our four stance, we turn that right foot out to around a 45. And the left foot is slightly forward, forward moving stance. So in the regular play for us, in the regular direction, the third brush knee is in what we refer to as a left four stance. Other people will call this a right four stance because to get to it, you have to start with the weight in the right leg. We go by where the weight ends. So again, different heights, that sort of thing, different widths. All three of these transitions, though they may be done in different lineages with different kinds of stances here, it's all going to be from the Water Tiger School perspective as far as the stances and the ends of postures. So this hand has brushed the knee and it's setting their palm down. The other palm is striking and notice we have a slight downward angle. Some people will do this in the forearm will be parallel. Some people will do this and the arm is very extended. Right? But this is our brush knee step and strike. Both palms are pressing. Both wrists are settling at the end of this posture. We got about 60, 70% of the weight on the front foot. Note my front toes are forward. They can also be in toward my center line. So see they're moving inside the blue line. Where you don't want to be in this position is the toes out. Now, we're about to, you know, we'll go there when we do the sequence, but we're not going to be moving forward in this position. We're going to rock back and do a little shift in that direction so the knee will stay supported. So that's our end of posture for brush, knee, step, and strike, and the third one. So I'm going to do a little sideways view here. Boom. Notice chest is still sunk, back is still round. 
So that's the end of posture for brush knee. I'm sort of doing a stationary thing, so I'm, I'm negating the, the casual clothes right now. Now, our pay paw, if you were here a few weeks ago, we did white crane. And white crane, weighted leg, right leg, is at a 45 again. And in white crane, the feet, the heels, more or less for me, in alignment. Some people will be spread out a little bit. Some people will do a cross. I'm pretty much heels in alignment. And white crane, you know, looks like this. Now, really, the empty stance that we're in here, the only difference, and notice my hips are square, I'm not, I don't, I haven't opened up my right hip and back, I've turned forward my hips are square. The only difference for the stance itself, for pay pa, is the heel is down. So a nice bend of that knee, not too deep, not too far down, and really, ideally, no weight on that foot. We talked about in White Crane the last couple of weeks, you know, if you need a little bit of weight so you don't fall over, that's fine. Especially if you're holding this for as long as I am, you might go, oh God, okay, I'm going to put like 50-50 for a little while because he's still rambling, you know, and then shift the weight back. That's the lower body. The upper body, again, people have all sorts of different hand positions for their end of posture to play the pee -paw. Um, But we are very specific. Now, this isn't how you actually get into the posture within the context of the movement in the form. But I start this by specifying, you know, prayer hands from yoga, or if you were here for a stretching set, you know it from <clears throat> wrist stretches. But, you know, my middle fingers are aligned, right? Now, what I want to do for our pay paw is take that prayer hands and move it not right straight out, not parallel to the floor, not right straight up, but about halfway in between. So a 45 degree angle. And from there, the right hand moves a little bit closer to the body, the left hand a little bit farther away, but my middle fingers remain in that same alignment. And my palms remain where if you brought them together, they'd slide right into one another. I don't have space here unless I need it. Right? If to have my hands in this position and spread out like this, I lose my sunken chest and my rounded back, then by all means, open up some distance between them, but keep them in that orientation. But ideally, they should be right where they were in prayer hands. Right at, both hands are at the center line, with the left hand extended a little bit farther out and the right hand a little bit closer too. So there you are, playing the pepin in the Water Tiger School of Perspective. So our postures are, I'm just gonna see, make sure that everything is still going well. Ah, thanks Steve. I'll look more detailed at those notes uh, at the end of the, uh, end of the session. But boom. So those are our two, brush knee, step and strike, three within our context, and play in the pipa. Now the Water Tiger School perspective, there are sort of three more mo movements or moments that you'll need to recognize to get from brush knee into pipa. So the other, you know, the other two ways the ways that are not Water Tiger School, uh, there's a lot less movement. Uh, and I'm usually one that really believes in an economy of movement. Um, but I also like this sequence a lot because it gives us a lot of variety, a lot of chances to play with intent, and a lot of chances to play with activation through the body. If part of me moves, all of me moves. If part of me is still, all of me is still. <clears throat> and some different techniques that... Um, wouldn't show up uh, otherwise. So one is at the rock back from the last brush knee, there's a, you start with a little detour over to the left. So you have a little turnout and those fingertips, see the right hand, almost spear hand like, so it's a little bit more active than delicate lady hand, moving to the left. And what that is intent wise, is we see an attack coming in and we're starting to move to intercept it. 
and the left hand is starting to coil around the left hip. But then what happens is we see a high punch coming in this way. And because we're moving to the left, economy of movement requires us not to do this because we don't have time to arc up and around. But, oops, sorry. But to reach up over the top of the fist. And the fingertips are dropped down. Sort of like, you know, you're not supposed to shake hands these days. But you're shaking hands with Andre the Giant. So you're breaking social distancing rules at this moment. I'm just going to scroll down a little bit, see if anybody else... Nope, okay. Um, so that sort of detour. And notice, as I start to move up this way, the right foot releases. I step onto the heel, and that's about the point that I'm shaking hands with Andre the Giant. So I've moved over the top of that punch. And then we have what we refer to, and by the way, detour, um, shaking hands with Andre the Giant, and the Egyptian hieroglyphic moment are not names of postures at all. That's just what I call the transitional moments to give people a reference. So you're here, right hand, fingertips up, palm toward, at, or through the center line. Left hand, fingertips down, palm toward, at, or through the center line. Now, when I was younger, I was comfortable and could still keep my chest sunk in my back rounded. My right hand would push to my left shoulder and my left hand would push to my right hip. I can't do that anymore. Structure, muscle, etc., age disallows that. So there's the Egyptian hieroglyphic moment. And from there, turning, oops, hopefully not falling over, into pay pa. So there's a process. Again, there's those hands. And notice what I do with that foot. Boom. I want to pick it up and extend it. So it's more like a small heel kick or a heel stump than it is just swinging the foot into place. That's an applicable kick. It's a crescent kick, very low. But we want that idea of it being a hidden heel kick or heel stomp. Uh, there's also a chin eye application, by the way, where you step at their toes and press the ball of the foot into their ankle. And if you have control, if you have strength, if you have that foot trapped and you have strong feet and ankles, you can actually topple the person backwards. So again, our sequen sequence from Water Tiger School from brush knee, four stance, 70-30, hips are square, brush the knee, settling in, hitting, rock back, you have that little detour over to the left. You're actually looking to the left, and then you see the punch coming in, right foot swings in, swings back out, left hand going behind. It's like you're blocking somebody behind you as you're also blocking that. By the way, I also say, you know, you had chili for dinner last night, and, you know, you're a little gassy, right? But it's behind. You know, it's not just waiting here for its turn to do something else. Fingertips drop down because you've gone up and over that punch. Pressing that punch over toward the left as the left hand brings in the left leg. And then turning forward to square off the hips and move into pay paw. Now you can close, do your little casual close forward, or a little casual close back, whatever works for you. So, again, ours have Water Tiger School's approach to this particular transition from brush knee three into pay paw has a lot of parts. So it makes it challenging to make sure that everything's moving, everything's moving with intent. And there's a fluidity of movement within that. You're always feeling the viscosity of the air. So at least one more time here. A little cleansing breath, a little rock back, a little turnout, a little detour over to the left, up and over to the right. That right foot's at a 45. Pressing the right hand, fingertips up, 
palm through the center line for me, other hand, left hand, fingertips down through the center line, and then turning forward into pay paw. I lied, we're going to do that one more time. So that, again, is Water Tiger School's process. Brush, knee, step and strike, boom. Toes forward here, knee over ankle safest, I didn't talk about that. Not over the, it can be over the top of the foot, that's our position. Not over, definitely not beyond the toes. Boom, we'll rock back, turn. Here comes, a, I, I always see a spear, I'm going to intercept and press a spear to the side. Spear's got some distance, I want to take care of this guy first. Boom, so I'm up and over the top of their punch, pressing it over to the left. And then switching hands, controlling that arm with the other hand, setting in, and maybe doing a knife edge strike with that hand as I kick. And that's play the pay paw, moving into play the pay paw from the Water Tiger School perspective. Now, the other, and I, I'm not sure how standard this is, it actually wasn't on my radar screen initially, but when I was talking about we were going to do that this week, it's like, you know, I should look and see if I can find, you know, a third option, because I knew a second one. Um, and I probably have seen this a lot, and it just didn't register. Um, or the third one. Not the third one yet. The one that I knew of that was sort of part of my, my standard of playing options was going from brush knee three, and I'm going to use the S word here, simply turning a little bit to the right, bringing in the left foot, and turning forward into pay paw. So that's not unlike the option that we gave you a few weeks ago, a couple, three weeks ago, I think so, yeah, into white crane, where you can be in parting wild horses main three, move back, and settle into white crane. So again, brush, knee, step, and strike three. And notice, I want the whole body movement, so there's a twist, there's a little chancy, compressing in, and then turning forward. So the weight goes from a four stance step in brush, knee, step, and strike, back into a back stance, three quarter back stance, more or less, into the single leg or the false stance, and into pay paw. You go from your brush knee step and strike. Again, shoulder wide, determined by the heels. Hips are square, shoulders are square, chest is sunk, back is rounded. Turning back to release that last strike, compressing in, and turning forward into your pay paw. So as you can see, that's a lot less movement than detour. Shaking hands with Andre the Giant, breaking social distancing rules, turning forward after the Egyptian hieroglyphic moment into PayPal. The third version, and probably why it exists, and I actually saw it in a lot of different places this week, Online. I saw it online, so it has to be true, right? That that's, they actually do it that way, because everything you see on the internet is, is true, right? Is they continue the movement forward. So, go from the last brush knee into this sort of reach forward, bring in the back foot, set that foot so it's going to be at the 45. Boom, brush knee, sort of a little twist, careful of that knee. So I'm reaching forward, a little twist in the torso, but not the knee, to bring that foot in, and then setting back, and turning forward again into pay paw. So we have the sitting back version, but we also have stepping forward version. 
hip square for us again this is still and i'm still moving into it within the stepping sequence um paying attention to the way water tiger school th does things as opposed to the way other people might but, so i still finish with my prayer hands position chest is still sunk back is still rounded oops so you can have boom little rock back a little turnout there's that you know attack coming in that direction oh this guy's closer reaching up and over that punch deflecting it to the side or egyptian hieroglyphic moment or squeeze box it's diane's name for it boom You can go back, take your step, turn back, play forward. You can do, continue the forward momentum, reaching, switching to the back foot, and turning the paper. So three, I wouldn't necessarily say really, really different ways of doing it. Of course, within the context of the lineage and the way that they may move as opposed to the way that we move at Water Tiger School. Uh, if you saw somebody who always did it like this, probably everything else also had in the flavor of the movement and the end of the posture would also be a lot different. I mean, a lot of people have pay paw and, you know, one hand is fingertips up and the other, you know, fingertips forward and all sorts of different configurations and hand positions and that sort of thing. And even for brush knee, I mean, there are a lot of people that do brush knee and they have a big, long extension about shoulder height. And I used to do it sort of close to that way. Um, each of them, I like the feeling, but again, that variety of movement for us in Water Tiger School, getting from brush knee three into pay paw serves our approach, natural movement intense, movement through the body and, and really sort of threading the nine hold pearl as you move. It really helps us explore all that. Not that the others don't, but um, I like the way in which we do. Doesn't mean like in, in five or 10 years, I'm gonna change my mind and go, you know, that stepping forward thing, I really like that, that better, that, that works for me now. It could be a deepening of understanding. It could be my balance isn't what it used to, who knows? Boom. So our three ways, one more time. Rock back, turn out. So you have the detour from brush knee three. That left hand is alive going around behind. You have the shaking hands with Andre the Giant. You have the Egyptian hieroglyphic moment. And remember again, those are names of transitional moments just for reference, not postures. The only two postures here are brush knee three and play the pay paw. You have the step back method, where you get into party, not party the wild horses, you get into brush knee, set back, there's a little turn into that back leg, and forward. You have the stepping forward method. You have brush knee, it's giving everybody a beat or two to get there. You have that little twist without twisting the knee. I don't want to Put, I don't want to put that kind of pressure on the knee, so I'm absorbing the twist in the hips and the torso as I reach forward, bring that right foot in, set it down so it can be at the 45, draw in, almost an Egyptian hieroglyphic moment, but not quite, I'm not defining it because other people who do it this way wouldn't have the Egyptian hieroglyphic moment. And there you go. So. Three, and there are probably more, right? As I said two weeks or a week ago when I introduced that we were going to be doing this, uh, I knew of two, and I'd see if I could find a third, and it was really easy. So my first shot uh, at going online and looking at different people's 24 is like, oh, huh. Yeah, I think I've seen that before, but I forgot about it. So there you are. A little diversity in Tai Chi, and as part of this four-week series, what you will see um, next week is what we did last week with 
horse's mane 3 into white crane, we're going to introduce a linear walking exercise with this exchange, with Water Tiger School's exchange. So we'll play from brush knee 3 through the sequence to get us to pay paw, uh, switch sides, and do brush knee 3 through playing the pay paw on the other side, and switch sides, and do brush knee through playing the pay paw back to the normal side and switch sides and do a walking exercise that way. So you can turn this into a linear walking exercise. Um, so you can get a little bit of practice, not only of the postures and the transitions themselves, um, but of that being able to play both sides and getting sort of both sides of the, the mental attention going. So, um, wow, that actually went relatively fast, unless I'm blurry here. Um, so I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, looks like Colette did. Uh, Boucher, I, I, I'm glad you, you liked it. Uh, you're welcome for the practice. And I'm just going to scroll down a little bit. Ah. Um, so, anywho, there you go. Uh, again, next week, a walking exercise. Not sure if we'll have original content on the YouTube channel this week or not. Um, we, are, we do have something in the queue, uh, a little stretchy time, just one, um, with modifications, which is basically don't go as low, uh, and intensifiers, which is basically go, hey, <laughs> yeah, you're going to add more to this. Um, however, I have a lot of personal, I'm, trying, I'm working on getting a lot of things on my calendar this week. Uh, that are sort of, as things are opening up, things that I have to do um, that have been delayed from home isolation. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, otherwise, we, we've sort of been hitting Wednesday for uploading old Facebook Live presentations on the uh, YouTube channel. And we're going to continue doing that, just one a week. Um, and again, sort of the difference, we, we, we started the live um, because we knew we could. Um, and we also launched then the YouTube channel because we knew also that there were, were at least a handful, if not a number of people in the programs, in the, in the public class programs that weren't on Facebook. So we wanted to give them an opportunity to do something without having to sign up for, uh, Facebook. Um, so for a while, we were doing original content on a regular basis, and then just when we discovered that we could upload uh, the, the uh, Facebook Live archive, um, and you can thank Tony Horton for that. Um, I'm sure the button was there, and we just didn't notice, um, but he pointed it out. Um, so anyway, I'm rambling. I'm not sure why. Um, I mean, it's not like I'm lonely. Um, I'm home isolating with my um, with my wife, so we are literally um, together alone <laughs> with three cats. Um, but yeah, there we go. Next week, walking exercise, same time, same channel. Hopefully, we will not have the same technical issues from what um, Rich indicated it was more Facebook than myself or any one individual, which isn't necessarily a surprise because uh, that happens. Um, probably leave the first part of this up and we'll need to do some editing changes on it and get some more information on this one. Uh, oh yeah, the other thing I want to mention about Facebook, um, I will do my best for like Steve to address you personally in a response, but Facebook has been kind of funky lately with allowing us to comment on our own thread, on our own videos. We might get like one or two comments and then suddenly we're blocked from commenting. Um, and the, the excuse is that they're eliminating spam and it's like it's my own page. Can't I comment on my own page? But of course, there's no feedback from Facebook when you complain like that. So anywho, um, thanks a lot. Keep washing your hands. Wear your damn mask. Uh, I mean, we're doing pretty well. In, uh, on Long Island, uh, Suffolk County had a, had a spike last week because people weren't paying attention to social distancing rules and masking over the 4th of July weekend, and we 
almost hit 2% infection rate again. It dropped down by this last weekend. I'm not sure where we are today, but we're still hovering around 1%. Um, and we'd like to, the, the things that are open, we'd like them to stay open so we can get back to, to this mat in the studio, so we can get back to the libraries, et cetera. Um, I think that's it. So take care, be safe, stay at home if you can. There are things that, yes, have to be done, especially since they've been delayed. I'm talking about, you know, things like car inspections, um, et cetera. Um, and wear your mask when you do go out and stay away from crowds. And we'll see you, uh, well, I won't see you, but you'll see me, hopefully. And hopefully you'll hear me. <laughs> um, and we'll talk to you later.